What we've done so far throughout the period is we're recording the costs related to the inventory into the work in process account, and then we transfer them to the finished goods once they're completed. In other words, we're recording the information into the work in process account as they happen, as the costs happen. The ones that we can assign directly to work in process, that including the uh, direct materials and direct labor, then we include in work in process. We can include them directly only if we can assign them to particular jobs. So direct materials and direct labor are items that we can assign to jobs such as job 15, job 16, job 17, job 18. Uh, the stuff that we could not assign directly to the jobs, we had to put into factory overhead, then use an allocation base to assign it to the job. So each job then does have factory overhead, but we had to use an estimate in order to apply out this factory overhead. So now we gotta consider, are these jobs uh, open? Are they closed or have they been sold? There's really only three things that can happen to these job cost sheets. They could either be a job that we're still working on, in which case I'm gonna call it open, it's still being worked on, or it's been closed or finished, whatever we want to call it, I'm gonna say closed. Then it's gonna be uh, a job that should be included not in work in process, but in finished goods. And then once uh, we sell it, I'm gonna say it's gonna be shipped at that point. So that's when it's gonna be shipped or done or completed. Uh, it's not only done in terms of the, the finished goods is done, but it's done in terms of it's it's gone. We shipped it, it's, it's left, and therefore should be recorded in cost of goods sold. Now notice what we're not focusing in here. I'm not focusing on the sale because the sale is gonna be recorded at that final point when we ship it. But that sales price doesn't have anything to do directly with these numbers on the cost sheets that we're directing, but the cost of goods sold does. So we'll talk more about that when we record the journal entry. Right now, just note that this current uh, job sheet is supporting work in process finished goods before we record this shipment meaning it's, it still has these two in finished goods. So if we, if we look at the supporting documentation for uh, the job cost sheets, we're gonna say that these three add up to, if I add up this 3,820, the, two the 2,790, and the 2,126, we're gonna say that the 3,820 plus the 2,790 plus the 2,126 adds up to the 8,736 that's still in finished goods inventory. Our goal now is going to be to ship these two out and move them from finished goods. They gotta go out of finished goods because we don't have them anymore. And they're gonna move to cost of goods sold. That journal entry then is gonna be for these two jobs, 3820 plus the 2790 or 600, uh, 6610 that we're gonna reduce the finished goods by leaving just the one finished good job, 2000. 126 and moving this 6610 to an income statement account a temporary account one that will close out at the end of the time period to retained earnings of cost of goods sold the two jobs that are still open that are still in work in process here are these green jobs that's going to be the 2024 and the 2390 so the 2390 and the 2024 add up to the 4414 which are still in work in process so these job cost sheets can then support the work in process and the finished goods. They will in essence support the cost of goods sold to a degree, but remember that these are temporary accounts that will close out to retained earnings. So as we go through time, as we go through years, we're gonna have a whole lot of closed jobs that have been closed and shipped hopefully, because we're gonna be doing this for a long period of time. The cost of goods sold number is going to always close out to retained earnings. So we can't really tie it out in the same way, the same fashion as we can tie out to the uh, finished goods and the work in process accounts. So just keep that in mind. Uh, note that we are looking at a, kind of a simplified job cost sheets here. The job cost sheet that we've looked at as an example uh, is more detailed here. We have the direct materials, direct labor and overhead, the three components of which will always be in the job cost sheet. Uh, this showing uh, more information as we go, including the requisition forms and the date of the direct material requisitions, as well as the time tickets and the date of the time tickets being allocated to this particular job. So this is just an example of one job 
uh, that could be more detailed and we're kind of summing this up uh, direct materials direct labor and overhead so just keep that in mind as, as we go the job cost sheets might look different uh, they could be very detailed we could have a simplified format of them different companies will have different job cost sheets it'll depend on what type of of work we're doing but they will all typically have if we're making stuff uh, direct materials labor and overhead and if we're not making stuff then we're basically typically going to have the the labor we're probably charging for hours and we could still have the overhead that we're going to allocate out okay so then if we then take a look at the journal entry it's a little bit more tricky for the sales journal entry because what we're doing now is saying these jobs have been shipped so we know that the finished goods inventory needs to go down because we no longer have these items and we have to tie out the job cost sheet here and the other side is a little bit more tricky we, we might say well what should the other side be and you're, you might be tempted to say well it should be sales because that's what well, that's what happened we made a sale but uh and we have to go back to that merchandising journal entry to figure this out and when you think of, of a merchandising company or any company that sells merchandise and it's a perpetual system there's two things we can think of them as two journal entries they happen at the same time we could record them as one journal entry but it's useful to think of them as two journal entries that happen at the same time happen simultaneously in a in a perpetual system when we make a sale one is that we re credit sales increasing sales and we debit if it's an invoice uh, accounts receivable or if we get the cash at that point cash so that's going to be one component now based on what we have here we don't know the number yet of that uh, we only know what the journal entry is going to be because all we're tracking here is the cost what we're tracking here is the other side which is to decrease the finished goods inventory and record the related expense of cost of goods sold that's what we know so far we know that this is going to be cost of goods sold the cost of goods sold 